All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jenna Wood, and I am one of the dietitians here with The Giant Company. If you're new to our classes, welcome. If you are not new, welcome back. Little overview of today's class, since it does run a little bit differently. Our Feature Friday classes, we feature, just as the name implies, either a brand, a type of food, a company, or today's a little bit different. We've done something similar before, but we kind of talk about this is more like a commission that, you know, supports a particular food product. So today we are talking about grapes from California with our tagline, good things come in bunches from grapes from California. So I do actually have a poll today, which is very rare for me. I'm not good with polls, um, but I do want to launch, let's see, a poll. So which grapes are your favorite? Do you like red, green, black? So pick your favorite. You might like them all. Uh, or maybe you don't like grapes. Shayna doesn't like grapes, which I find crazy, but that's okay. <laughs> there are many other fruits out there, but I love, I love all three, but I think if I had to pick one, I prefer green grapes. I like that kind of tart, sweet, and they tend to be really crisp, delicious. All right, I'm going to end the poll, share the results. We've got about 53% of people say they like red grapes, 38 like green, uh, 7% like black. There aren't as many varieties of black, so that makes sense. And only two people said they didn't like grapes, so that's okay. Or thanks for joining anyway. All right, so let's get started. I do have a quick little video. I don't know if the sound will work. It's just music, um, but just from their website to kind of just show the beautiful grapes. I like um, one. I like the idea of the trail mix that had like the almonds and the cheese and then the fresh grapes instead of maybe raisins. I thought that was really fun. All right. So let's do a dive into California grapes and particularly table grapes, which is all we're going to discuss today. And I'll kind of dive into what that means. But grapes themselves, not just table grapes, but grapes have been cultivated for over 8,000 years. So they are not a new crop by any stretch. Of course, varieties, you know, shape, seedless, non, you know, all those things have developed over time, but they've been cultivated for a good long time. Back in 1839, that's when we started to grow them out in California. And really ever since, they've been producing really high quality, delicious table grapes. And why I keep saying table grapes is because these are the types of grapes that are meant for fresh consumption rather than use in wine, making juice, or even drying for raisins. So these are specifically, you know, the grapes you're going to be buying fresh in the produce department to snack or use in recipes. The uh, California Table Grape Commission, which is what we're kind of talking about today, this was established by an act of the state legislature in California back in 1967, and it keeps being reaffirmed every five years because California grows a lot of our produce, as you've probably learned from attending our classes, so it is really important just really for the health of the nation and the food supply that we support California agriculture. And the purpose of this commission really is to create a demand for California grapes around the world. And it really is working. I'll show you on the next slide. But what I really kind of like here is like 1839, if we think back, this is about a decade before the gold rush. So really grapes were uh, you know, starting to crop up and be a staple crop in California even before people started coming out there for the gold rush. And of course, the gold rush may have ended, but the grape rush, so to speak, still continues. And now roughly 99%, so nearly all of the grapes you're going to purchase here in the United States, table grape-wise, and really across the world, most of them are coming from California. There are over 89 varieties grown, and I'll show you kind of a picture of some of the varieties. They tend to fall into those three colors we mentioned, the green, red, and black, and in seeded and unseeded varieties. That's a natural process where they kind of select for ones that have seeds or don't, and even ones that are technically seedless, like the ones I bought today, you might still see either teeny tiny little seeds or um, they call them seed traces, but typically right after fertilization, they stop, the seed stops growing. So that's why it's super tiny compared to like a seeded grape. I'm not a huge fan of seeded grapes <laughs> and that's, they're not very commonly consumed anymore anyway. 
Uh, grapes are considered berries. So we know how nutritious berries are. And actually, so they're berries, but they have an average of 100 berries on the bunch. So when you kind of pick up that bunch, often they have about 100 on the bunch itself. So I thought that was kind of fun. And grapes from California are really in season good portion of the year, typically from May through January in two different regions. So here we have the two regions. Of course, grapes are growing throughout the state of California, but many of them are being used for wine production. For table grapes, we really see them coming from two different regions. We have the Coachella Valley down here in the south, which I, I must need to move to Coachella because apparently it's about, you know, 350 days of sunshine. I could deal with that, right? And the average annual temperature is 81 degrees. So the grape season will really begin in late spring when the first grapes are really harvested and grown in the Coachella Valley. It's a nice warm desert environment and the temperatures really help the grapes be ready in early May or May when they start to be harvested. After that season ends in Coachella, it kind of moves up around July to the harvesting in the San Joaquin Valley. So, you know, we're really growing grapes almost year round in California. These two valleys are particularly important for grape production for three main reasons. They have ample sunshine, nice warm days. Uh, they have nutrient rich soils, and then they have clear mountain waters that are coming down. So really just the perfect trifecta of what we need to grow really nice table grapes. I'd love to go out and see them. I think that'd be fun. Now, what about the different varieties that we are growing for table grapes? I just think they look so pretty. So the green, the red, and the black that we have here. As I mentioned, there are nearly 90 varieties of table grapes grown in California, predominantly in those two regions here. Um, these are just a handful of the ones that were the most commonly purchased or the ones that had the greatest production back in 2022, 2023. As you'll see, there's a pretty wide variety of both the red and the green and only one of the black actually. Um, and you can kind of see, I'm not going to go through each of these, but they have different growing times, um, different names. Like you're probably not going to come to Giant or Martins and see IFG 68175, but the grower, the producer, they're going to know what variety those likely were. You may see some names. Um, I know we've talked about other names and varieties of grapes, so you may see them have a particular name. But as you'll kind of see, they vary in terms of size, how round they are, if they're elongated, um, the sweetness. Oops all that good stuff. But what about, oh, actually, I do want to go back really quickly. If you are looking, so like we said, 99% of table grapes are grown in California. So more likely than not, if it's between May and probably mid-January, the grapes you're buying are likely coming from California. But if you want to be sure, there are some ways to kind of look. You can look for, like mine says, product of USA. It's what month is it? October. So I know it's probably coming from California. Um, this one, however, it says California right on the bag. So easily I know where that one's coming from. Um, and there are certain PLUs and numbers you can look for, but predominantly if we're in that season and it says product of USA, you know it's coming from California. You may also sometimes see this little emblem here with the little grape that say grapes from California. So if you're looking, you'll probably see that. Okay, what about grapes and nutrition? A lot of times people will mention grapes are sugary and what have you. Yes, of course, any fruit is really gonna have carbohydrates, but we just mentioned they're berries, so they have tons of nutritional value too. So all colors, the um, you know, the red, the green, the black, they're all going to have, you know, various nutrients. They will be very nutritious. But the red and the black grapes do owe you know, that dark hue that we think of to the anthocyanins, which are powerful antioxidants. So green grapes, again, they're my favorite. They're going to be super nutritious too and have other antioxidants. But it's one of the reasons we recommend eating the rainbow because you're going to get different antioxidants and phytochemicals from different colored fruits and vegetables. Uh, in terms of polyphenols, so you've probably heard of polyphenols too. Resveratrol is going to be one of them. These are found in every part of the grape. So the skin, the flesh itself, and actually the seeds as well. So if you're eating a seeded variety, some polyphenols will be in there, which is also why some people use grape seed oil. But 
Grapes are also the main dietary source of resveratrol, which you've probably heard of before. One of the reasons people talk about drinking wine, we do still get it from whole grapes. So if you're eating that whole grape with this you know, beautiful red skin or the purple grapes, likely you're going to be getting a good source of resveratrol there without having to consume alcohol if you don't want to. Uh, and again, the resveratrol is mainly found within those skins. And these are potent antioxidants as well, these polyphenols. You know, there's over 1,600 compounds likely found within grapes, different antioxidants, vitamins, minerals. Um, but those polyphenols are really nice with helping protect our cells and our health. So definitely something, you know, grapes are a healthy, important thing to add to your diet if you like them. Grapes, any color really, can contribute to heart health, promoting immune function, and playing a vital role in promoting healthy aging. Again, those antioxidants, that's some of the things they can do. Green grapes, so there may be differences for why you may pick certain grapes. I mean, not necessarily for nutrition. We did talk on that, but, you know, I like green grapes because they're tart and crisp, perfect for snacking or salads, which I'm actually using red grapes for a salad today. Uh, and red grapes tend to be a little sweeter and softer. So when I was slicing the grapes, they are a little softer, um, but they're ideal for desserts or juicing, or again, you can use them however you would like. I'm not going to dive into each of these things here, but of course I will send the slides. This was on the Grapes from California website, but it kind of just discusses all of the different pieces of health that grapes and their components can be beneficial for. So eye health, immune function, colon health. So they do have some fiber and the antioxidants and just, you know, the components are beneficial for the gut bacteria, our skin health. So I thought that was an interesting one here heart health, as I mentioned, and even diabetes. So grapes are considered a low glycemic index food. Of course, for somebody with diabetes, you may not want to consume you know, five cups of grapes with nothing else in it, because yes, you will be getting a lot of carbohydrates and nothing else. So you may want to consider pairing it, which often you will see grapes paired with something like nuts or cheese or something that will provide either a little bit of fat or protein to help balance and just get the other nutrients that maybe grapes do not have. Uh, just the nutrition facts label, they'll vary very slightly, um, but even you know the different colors are going to have a very similar nutrition panel here. Um, they're going to be, so this is for three quarters of a cup. It's gonna be 23 grams of carbohydrates. So that's right in between like one and two carb counts. Uh, it does have a gram of fiber. They're not a super high fiber food, especially compared to other berries. They are a little bit lower in fiber. 20 grams of naturally occurring sugar, which again is why we recommend pairing it with something that has protein or fiber or healthy fats. Um, they are a good source of vitamin K, virtually no sodium in there, um, a little bit of vitamin C. They're not a super high source of vitamin C, but they do have some there too. Um, and again, the nutrition will be fairly similar between the varieties. The main differences are going to be things that you don't see on a nutrition label, like the different types of antioxidants and the colors and the phytonutrients. But how do we select grapes that we really, I'm so bad at these. There we go. Okay. So we want to look for grapes um, in bunches or, or, you know, sometimes they don't come in bunches, but typically they will. And you really want the, um, let's see. You want the stem to be nice and pliable, and you want the grapes, obviously, to be nice and plump. You don't want them to be dried, shriveled, anything like that, or already burst. Um, you want them to be nice and plump. If they have a waxy kind of coating on them, I know I talked about this a couple weeks ago, but you may, I can't really see it in the lighting, but grapes will often, and it's probably easier to see it on like a darker grape, um, you might be able, I rinsed these, but you might be able to see a little bit of a waxy coating. This is called the bloom, completely natural. It is just a natural protectant that the plant makes to help keep in moisture, keep out things we don't want. So that's one of the recommendations that to prolong the shelf life, we recommend storing grapes unwashed in the fridge. However, if you're somebody who knows you will not eat the grapes, if you have to wash them every single time, Certainly you can give them a good rinse when you first purchase them. I would maybe put a little paper towel in there so they don't stay super wet because then they can go bad faster. But gold standard is to wash them right when you're ready to use or eat them. You want to rinse them under cold running water before eating. And grapes can absorb odors and different things because, you know, 
just the way that they're structured. So you don't want to store them near onions or leeks. So if you have a chopped up onion, like I'm going to have leftover uh, red onion from our recipe today, I'm going to make sure that red onion is stored in something really nice and then keep them kind of separated in the fridge because you probably don't want your grapes tasting like onions, Maybe, but probably not. Okay, so we are going to get into a couple other things about grapes. The Grapes from California website, so you know I love talking about recipes, but the Grapes from California website have so many recipes, like so many more than I ever would have thought, and in so many different categories. Like if you want a snack that has grapes or an entree or a salad, they have a guacamole that has grapes, different beverages. So they have different smoothie recipes. You can either use them fresh or frozen in smoothies, so that can help make it thicker. Um, this is like a grape salsa different frozen desserts, smoothies, like I mentioned, different side dishes, salads, like so many options. And what's really nice about their website is you can categorize the recipes so many different ways. Like if you want a vegan recipe or if you want a dietitian recipe, or um, I think they have categories for like vegan, vegetarian. So like there are a lot of ways to find recipes that have grapes. Cause I think a lot of people think of grapes as just a snack, which they are great for snack, but you know, we think of just snacking or maybe like a charcuterie board, but they really have so many other benefits and uses culinarily. And if you want to learn more, so I recommend always following the social media of the, you know, companies you purchase from, uh, but we have the Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, if you are on X, YouTube, and if you want to just look up the hashtag, the grapes from California CA. Um, you can see, you know, posts of people using their grapes and all of that good stuff. So definitely check out their recipe database. And really their website is just a wealth of knowledge. They have a whole video and a page about the growing, I um, uh, can't think of the right word, just how they grow and like the different growing stages and what it looks like and what's happening at those stages. Um, so that was really fascinating to kind of see as well. And I know there's a lot on here, but there are so many ways, as I mentioned, to use grapes. Of course, snacking on them, both fresh and frozen. I love frozen grapes. So delicious. They can be roasted, sauteed, grilled, or pickled. I think I said this last time, but I'm definitely going to pickle some of these. And I do have red onions. So I think I might want to pickle the red with the red onion. That'll be so good. In beverages, you can freeze the grapes and then use them as ice cubes so that, you know, the ice cube's not watering down your drink. Uh, on green salads, kind of like I'm doing today, on cheese boards, you can put them on top of hot or cold cereal. Any that are orange here, I've linked to a recipe on their website. There was a quinoa breakfast cereal with grapes and pistachios. Oh my gosh, that recipe looks so good. Pistachios also being a very common California crop. In chicken or Waldorf salads, I love Waldorf salads, and there are so many different variations and ways to make them. That's actually what I was going to try to make today, but I figured most people probably have a recipe they like, but there are recipes on the California Grapes website. Grape salsas are delicious if you've never made one. In smoothies, as I mentioned, um, sheet pan meals, pies, they have pie recipes. In burritos and tacos, so definitely check out the website for those recipes. They have a recipe that, and I linked it here, it's um, like a yogurt-based, um, kind of like a tzatziki sauce, but it's chopped up cucumbers and chopped up green grapes. It looks so, so good. Uh, mixed into cooked grains, added to pita sandwiches or other types of sandwiches on kebabs, either fruit or otherwise. And one thing I really liked, um, they have a picture here on their website. You could add grapes. So maybe not like the best looking grapes in the bunch, add them into your vase uh, and in the water of your flowers. And they just look so beautiful. I, I would have never thought to do that, but I thought that was really fun, um, fun way to use some grapes. Let's see. And I do have here, so there's a link to this. This is a PDF from Grapes from California as well, but they have recommendations for power pairings and just if you want a particular flavor profile, which I love stuff like this. So I definitely wanted to keep it and share it on here. But like if you wanted to pair grapes with greens, so they have, you know, kale, radicchio, spinach, um, different vegetables. I'm doing um, Brussels sprouts today as well different grains. It really, grapes pair with so many different things, different spices. So remember we talked about turmeric on Tuesday. Grapes are a great pairing for that, like in curries, uh, cocoa even. 
chocolate and grapes are great together, uh, garlic and cinnamon. And then again, if you want to pair grapes with something sour, so maybe you want to pickle them or you want to do something bitter like Brussels sprouts or something salty like prosciutto or an umami like cheese or garlic. Again, I thought uh, this is part of a bigger handout that you can find at this link, but it was just something I thought was an interesting way. Like what flavor am I looking for? Grapes can probably go along with it. And this is something I've talked about. I don't know where, but it's something that I think is a really fun tradition that you can try. Um, and I, I've done it a couple of times, but there is a, um, I can't think of the right word, tradition uh, that started back in Spain in 1895, um, where they consume 12 grapes at the stroke of midnight. And I think just the pretty uh, glass here that has the champagne and then the 12 grapes on the skewer here. But the tra tradition consists of eating one grape at each of the 12 bell strikes at midnight on New Year's Eve. Many believe that it's, you know, going to lead to a year of prosperity. And I really like the um, having the different colors grapes um, in a row here. I think that looks really cute. I've also heard it that, you know, you eat the 12 grapes at midnight, and if you get a sweet grape, it's going to be a really good month. And if you get a sour grape, maybe not the best month for you that year. Um, so I've heard a couple different variations, but I think that's just a fun. And then you're you're starting the year off eating 12 grapes, so not a whole bad way to start off the new year. So this is definitely something I'll do uh, at New Year's. Okay, so let us get into our recipe for today. I don't have a second camera today. Um, technology's not been my friend today. But I am just going to really make the dressing in front of you. I already chopped up everything. But this is a recipe, again, from Grapes from California's website. It's a newer recipe, California Grape and Brussels Sprouts Slaw. So it calls for shredded Brussels sprouts. We did not have any in the store. I don't know if it's too early in the year, um, but I just use the kind of the container that they're sliced in half. So then I just cut them into pieces um, and shredded them myself. This is 20 ounces. The recipe calls for 12. So I didn't use the whole thing. So I'm gonna use that for another meal perhaps. Uh, then we're gonna use some freshly shredded red cabbage. We do have that um, already kind of in a baggie our giant brand, Giant Martin's brand. Then we're gonna do two cups of red grapes from California, cut in half. Uh, I did throw in a couple green ones too, cause I love green grapes. And I just thought the contrast looks nice. Chop up a little bit of red onion, some scallions, and then we're gonna make a dressing with rice vinegar, honey, lime, or lemon juice. I thought that was interesting. Soy sauce, a low sodium soy sauce, and it's only a teaspoon, so it's really not too much there. Olive oil, some sesame oil, black pepper, and then toasted sesame seeds on top, kind of as a garnish. They, so you combine all the salad ingredients, you make the dressing, and it does recommend chilling it for about 45 minutes. You know, I'm not going to wait, so I'm going to give it a try. But if you do let it sit, one, the cabbage will kind of, you know, break down a little bit, so it's not as much of a bite. Um, but you can make it maybe before dinner or something and let it sit. And then we're going to sprinkle it with some um, of the sesame seeds. It just looks so cute. Uh, and of course, we have, oops, too fast. We have plenty of recipes on our savory res uh, website as well. So you're going to be inundated with great recipes. But we have, um, these are three different ones than from the ones I talked about a couple of weeks ago. But this is a skillet roasted pork chops with grapes and rosemary. A chicken Waldorf, if you don't have, you know, a go-to Waldorf recipe and a grape and farro salad with pepita, which are like pumpkin seeds. They all sound delicious. So let me stop sharing quickly. I know there's so many questions. Um, I probably won't be able to get to all of them. Uh, let me see. So I'm gonna pull up my recipe again so I can just see. But into a large bowl, I have the, sh oh, it smells so good. I mean, I smell a lot of red onion, but uh, it has the Brussels sprouts that I shredded the um, red cabbage, and then I have the scallions, the red onion, and I already sliced up the grapes, as you can see. So I just sliced them in half lengthwise like that. Then for the dressing, I have, ooh, where is it? I have like a little ox, is it oxo? Yeah, I have a little like oxo salad dressing container, so I'm just gonna make it in here. But into here, we're gonna do two tablespoons of rice vinegar, 
any will be fine. I really recommend looking for one that says natural because natural is going to um, typically not have any sodium or sugar. So you want to control uh, you know, how much of that you're adding. So mm, ooh, rice vinegar has a kick to it. I like it. All right. So we're going to add two tablespoons right into our jar here. You could probably do like a white vinegar. You probably could do a red vinegar in this recipe, truly. Um, just something about the, the rice vinegar is nice for all of the ingredients we have. So that's two tablespoons. Then I'm gonna skip down because honey's next, but honey is such a pain to get out of the tablespoon. So we're gonna skip down and then we're going to do sesame oil. So I did pick up, we have a toasted sesame oil. This one is with like the olive oils and everything. You can use just regular um, sesame oil if you'd like. I think the toasted does bring out a nice flavor. Um, if you don't like sesame oil, I'm not the biggest fan, but I do think it'll be nice in this. Um, a little goes a long way. So uh, a tablespoon of that it smells so good. Oh, I think it's OXO. I don't know. That's just how I always said it. My dad used to work for a kitchen store, so I think that's how it's I think it's how it's pronounced. <laughs> uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. Again, if you don't like sesame oil, you could probably just do the three full tablespoons of olive oil. All right. You're supposed to like whisk this in to emulsify it, but I'm going to give it a good old shake. So it should be fine. So three tablespoons of olive oil right in there. And I'm going for the extra virgin olive oil since it's a salad dressing. Uh, what else? Then we need our soy sauce. So I'm doing our taste of inspirations reduced sodium, knowing that reduced is still pretty high, but we are only using one teaspoon. So just one little teaspoon, not too bad there. Alrighty, one teaspoon. Then I believe we do need some lime or lemon juice. I went with, I have both at home, but I went with lemon. So I do have just my fresh lemon right in here. And what did it say? One teaspoon. It's not too much either. But of course, you know, it's a salad dressing. I would give it a taste and then change it up for uh, your preferences because I love lemon. Okay. Oh, that smells real good. So we have, oh, then all we need is our honey. So I do have my honey. My honey's up in my cabinet. Uh, I do just have our Nature's Promise honey here. And it's a tablespoon and a half of honey, which I think is going to be so nice. The sweetness will contrast nicely. And I did the oil right before the honey. So it's coming right out, which is very nice. Okay. So you can kind of see the dressing is separated in three different compartments. All right. So I believe that was everything. So the two tablespoons rice vinegar, one and a half tablespoons honey, teaspoon lemon juice, teaspoon low sodium soy sauce. It says low sodium, but we know it's reduced sodium. Uh, two tablespoons olive oil and one tablespoon sesame. Yeah, I'm excited. And if you don't use it all, which I think it calls for all of it, but I would play it by ear, see how much you need. You can always let it sit in the fridge for a couple of days, use it on other things. Okay, Maybe yeah. It looks really good. <laughs> Talked about the Phillies. All right. So there we go. That looks delicious. I'm going to pour it over. I'm going to pour some of it, not all of it, right over top of my salad. I said that, but like, <laughs> I still don't have too much left. And then just give it a good toss. It's actually a lot of veggies. So I think I'm going to use it all. They're pretty hearty, like the Brussels sprouts, so they're not going to absorb too much of it. Okay. So as it said, should let it sit. We're not going to do that. I'm going to serve it right on my plate so you can see. This looks beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay. And it's going to have such a nice pop of sweetness from the honey, but the grapes. And I have, oh my gosh, this looks so good. Okay. Let me do a little bit more. Then we're just going to top it off with a little bit of toasted sesame seeds. Honestly, if you don't like sesame seeds or are allergic um, and you can have almonds, I think like slivered almonds would be really nice um, on this too. Looks so delicious. I don't have a fork, so I'm going to have to eat it later. But I will send you a photo 
it smells so delicious. The red onion, the scallions, everything together. Oh, it's so, so beautiful. Um, but I hope you enjoyed learning more about grapes from California. Again, remembering that roughly 99% of the table grapes are grown in California. So you can rest assured that basically from May through January, you're getting really wholesome, delicious grapes right here from our country. And I hope you pick out some grapes and make one of the fantastic recipes on their website sometime this weekend. But thank you again.